you now for question number nine from the paper C of um, International A Level uh, P1. This is adapted from another question actually, it's not exactly the same. It's a question from I think a C1 paper, but uh, I adapted it to um, be in line with the new syllabus, some of the question or parts of the question. Now, um, here we're told that we have a sketch of a curve with the equation y equals a half x plus 27 over x minus 12 and the point A lies on the curve and has a point has the coordinates 3 and minus 3 over 2 okay uh, we got to show that the equation of the normal to A uh, to C to the curve at A can be written as 10y equals 4x minus 27 okay so basically we need to find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point A. So to find the equation of a straight line, which a normal is, we need two things. We need to have the gradient and a point on the line, okay, on the curve. So we've got the point, which is A. Uh, so we know the coordinates of the point. What we need to know is the gradient of the normal. Okay, the gradient of the normal, which is equal to, okay, uh, well, if you multiply it by the gradient of the tangent, you end up with minus 1. So the gradient of the tangent has the same gradient of the curve at that point. So let's find the gradient of the curve at that point. In order to do, do that, we need to first find the gradient function for the curve. So you've got y equals a half x, and let's get it ready for differentiating straight away, plus 27x to the power of minus 1, minus 12. That's the uh, the normal function. What we need to do is to find the gradient function dy dx. dy dx is going to be well half x. The x disappears. You're left with a half. Uh, multiply by the power, so you get minus 27. Take one from the power, you're going to get minus two, and the constant just becomes zero. So that's the gradient function, and we know that at the point that we need. Okay, at the point a. At the point A, um, x is equal to 3. So the gradient of the tangent is going to be a half minus 27. Let me write it in, over this way. 20, this is like a half minus 27 over x squared. Right? Writing it with the x squared underneath um, <coughs> to the power of minus 2 becomes 1 over x squared. So that, that becomes 27 over 3 squared. So the gradient of the tangent is a half minus 27 over 9 which is 3 27 over 9 is 3 okay so a half minus 3 is going to be minus uh, minus 2 and a half minus 5 over 2 this is like 1 over 2 minus 6 over 2 which is minus 5 over 2 so the gradient of the tangent is negative 5 over 2 therefore the gradient of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal of this Okay, if you multiply them, you're going to get minus 1. So the gradient of the normal is going to be 2 fifths. Okay, so we have the point, which is 3 and minus 3 over 2. And we have the gradient, which is uh, of the normal, which is 2 fifths. So we can now find the equation of the line y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we got y minus minus 3 over 2, which is y plus 3 over 2, is equal to the gradient, which is 2 over 5 times, and you're going to have x minus 3. Okay, let me just get rid of this down here. I'll have to use this on the next page, I guess. So you got now, um, you want to solve this equation. So what I'll do is I'll multiply everything by 10 that way I'll get rid of all the fractions in one go so I'm going to multiply by 10 so I'll have 10y plus if I multiply 3 over 2 by 10 I'll get 15 because the 2 and the 10 cancel leave you 5 5 times 3 is 10 and if I multiply 2 fifths by 10 I'm going to get 4 so I have 4x minus 3 so let's now expand so 10y plus 15 is equal to 4x minus 12. 
Okay, how do they want us to express the answer? 10y equals 4, 4x minus 27. Okay, good. So uh, they want us to have the y, 10y as a subject. So they want us to make 10y the subject. So let me just move this down here. To make 10y the subject, you just subtract 15 from both sides. So you have 10y is equal to 4x minus 12 minus 15, which is minus 27. Okay, and there we have, we've shown what we needed to show. And that That is the answer to part A and part B I'll do on the next page. Okay, now for part B. <coughs> we are asked to use algebra to find the coordinates of B. And B is the point where this... Uh, normal that we found the equation of as 10y equals 4x minus 27 meets the curve a second time. Okay, so we can see that it meets the curve at the point A and the point A had coordinates 3 and minus 3 over 2. So the point A had coordinates 3 and minus 3 over 2. So that, 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 that x value here is 3 where it meets and it meets it again somewhere over here. There's another x value where it meets. We need to find the coordinates of the point where it meets again. That's what we need to find. Okay, so basically this equation and this equation, okay, we have to solve them simultaneously. So we have 10y equals 4x minus 27 and we have y equals a half x plus 27 over x minus 12. Okay, so in order for me to solve these two equations simultaneously, I have to basically um, <coughs> substitute one of them into the other or what if I could do something like I could multiply all of this by 10 and then make them equal to each other I could do that um, I can make this into 10y this becomes 10y equals 10 times a half is 5 5x plus 270 over x minus 120 and then I can say okay 10y equals 4x minus 7 27 and 10y equals 5x plus 270 over x minus 20 minus 120 and I can make them equal to each other. So I can say 4x minus 27 is equal to 5x plus 270 over x minus 120. Now I can get rid of the denominator or the fraction by multiplying everything by x. Multiply everything by x, I won't have any fractions left. So this becomes 4x squared minus 27x equals, and this side you're going to get 5x squared plus 270 minus 120x and now I can combine the like terms if I bring everything so the x squared is positive this will become x squared I'll leave 0 over here and I have minus 120 plus 27 which is going to be minus that 93 minus 120 plus 27 I think that's minus 93x let me just make sure you have um, minus 120 plus 27 whoops I have this in the wrong mode yeah you have minus one plus where, where are we yeah minus 120 plus 27 minus 93 so that's minus 93 X and you you've got here the only number left is 270 Okay, so we have to try to solve this equation and I, you, I see we can factorize it. In fact, we can solve it because we know one of the factors is 3. And 3 times 90 will give us 27. 270, sorry. So we know, we know one of the factors is 3 anyway because, you see, it, they intersect at 3 and minus 3 over 2. The coordinates of A was 3 and minus 3 over 2. So we know x equals 3 is one factor. So we can say that this is going to be x minus 3 and x minus 90. They add up to minus 93 and they give you that as a product. So you have x equals 3 and x equals 90. So we know that this is for A and this is for B. And we can find what uh, the y value is because we know that 10y is equal to 4x minus 27. So 10y is equal to 4 times 90 minus 27 okay so y is equal to 4 times 90 minus 27 that's 360 minus 27 divided by 10 so y is equal to let's have a look 
360 minus 27 and then divide by 10 so it gives you 33.3 so y is equal to 33.3 okay so the coordinates of b are therefore uh, the x value is 90 and the y value is 33.3 and there we have it y is equal to 360 minus yeah, 4 times 90 minus 27 over 10 okay so there is the answer to part b we used algebra we used simultaneous equations to find its value and then now part c let's just organize this a bit Okay, part C it says if the equation of the curve is y equals fx and the equation of the normal to C at A is y equals gx, find the values of x for which fx is greater than or equal to gx. So this is f of x and this is g of x. And we want to find the values of x for which um, f of x is greater than g of x. We want to find where f of x is greater than or equal to g of x. Now, they're equal at a and b, but between a and b, f of x goes below g of x, right? Here it's above it. Between a and b, it goes below it. We want to know when f of x is above g of x. So you can see it's when x is less than or equal to 3, and when x is greater than or equal to 90, because that was, that, that was 90 here. So you can see that th those are the... Um, solutions. So you say when x is less than or equal to 3, because it says greater than or equal to, or when x is greater than or equal to 90. Those were the two places where they intersected, and we can see that the graph, the curve, is above the line when x is less than 3, when x is more than 90. Between 3 and 90, the curve is below the line. Okay, so we want to know when it's above it. Then it says, shade the region that is defined by the inequalities y is greater than f of x and y is less than g of x. So y is greater than f of x, so it's above this curve and it's below the line. Well, it's, it's this region here. This is the region that is above the curve and below the line. And that's it. That's the end of this question. Okay, thank you for watching.